Otherwise, you'll just say like, oh, well, that's not how parents should talk and that's not how relationships with your kids should be. Yes. Okay. We know that. Thank you. But they're still our fucking mom and dad. So, okay. We still have to figure out. We can't just like throw them into a senior citizen home. We just can't stop talking to our parents. Ugh. I like, okay. Like your family's got to be, for me, my family would have to be very bad for us to stop talking like that but that doesn't mean they were great or perfect okay so i'm excited tell me how their volume is please we're watching abba and preach dynamic duo this is the most beautiful thing there's a point where your parents go from being your parent to your friend and you're no longer just looking at them laterally now you're looking at them horizontally and eventually you're the ones looking down at as they're starting to struggle. So you have to have that mindset of realizing there's going to be an evolution provided you guys both try to grow together. You know, the first time you had to figuratively slap your parents upside the head and be like, go to your doctor's appointment. Yeah! Bro, I can look at my mom and be like, hey, stupid, you about to go blind. Hey, stupid. Go to your eye appointment. No, no, but I don't want to. You're going to go blind. You're literally going to do more work for me when you blind. Go to your goddamn doctor's appointment so you make it easier for me to take care of you. If you're watching right now, I want you guys to think about your loved ones. And I want you to ask yourself this Kobe. Question. Oh, not Kobe. My bad. So when you think about your entire life, <laughs> how you were raised. Ah, damn. Did your parents... Number one complaint. If Abba doesn't learn how to speak from his chest, I'm going to call him and drag him on air. This man whispers so low that every time I feel like my volume is out, this man, he's like, and I don't know if you know this. And I'm like, Abba, speak louder. Do a good job. But he's so quiet. Quickly. I want you to think about the question and what's your answer. Why is... The, the, it's better when you explain it. Okay, peep game. So this guy comes up to me, right? <laughs> this guy comes up to me. And he's like, did your parents do a good job? And I was like, well... I mean, they did the best they could. Mm -hmm. It was like, that's not what I asked you. It was like, and he said, what I mean is, I could try to perform an open art surgery and do my best. Mm. Somebody's dying. Because mm. <laughs> even though I'm doing my best, I'm not going to do a good job because that's mm -hmm. not what I do. Mm -hmm. Now, did your parents do a good job? And boy, <laughs> that fucked me up. Because <laughs> Let me fucking tell you something, peeps. Let me tell you. My partner and I just had this conversation. Because I'll meet people who are like, so-and-so is a good parent. And I'm like, oh. And I do judge people for how they judge who's a good parent. I do judge people. Now, here's the thing. My partner and I asked each other very specific questions. Because we want to be very specific kinds of parents. And, of course, in our head, we're going to be a good parent. But, of course... That's probably not going to be the same to my kids. Maybe my kids won't think we're good parents, right? But we're going to be the kind of parents we want to be, hopefully centered around the kids' joy and happiness and everything else, if we have kids. And when I had to, like, really meditate on whether or not I thought my parents were good parents, it is true that my parents are good people and they tried their best. Uh, but their parenting styles and the way that they parented – could have been a lot better and again I'm not judging them as people I'm judging them as parents so in some ways my parents did amazingly because obviously look at me and in some ways my parents did very badly because you know look at me <laughs> and then um, some of that stuff is actually my problem you know what I'm saying it's true I'm gonna say this <clears throat> I think as kids especially Immigrants, mm. we have an instinctual and cultural demand to protect our parents because mm. they've given mm. so much. They traveled from far. They sacrificed a lot of things. We feel the need to protect them. And that includes criticism. And I understand it. And I want to make this clear when I ask this question. I'm not telling you to not be grateful. No. I'm not telling you to not respect them. That's not what I ask. I'm not telling you not to look up to them and say, you persevered a lot. And I respect that. That's, that's not what I'm saying. That's not the question. What I'm saying is. What's the, what you're saying? Through your upbringing, were you given the optimal circumstances or the adequate baseline to be able to do well? To be able to have a life of a child that you feel is fit? And it's interesting because people will say, oh, no, no, I will never say anything. But you notice the life that they try to give their kids is substantially different than what their parents gave them. 
I will say I am an updated version to how my parents grew up, but then uh, my kids will be an updated version to me for sure, as it should go. Um, Garrett says, uh, f- I feel like Brittany is just going to coddle her kids like a boomer. What would that look like? Because I feel like I'm going to be a really like, I'm going to have certain expectations for my kids. Um, I don't know. What does coddle mean? Because I don't, I'm not I'm not a very like coddly person. I don't coddle anyone, not even my partner. So I feel like I'm not going to do that to my kids, but maybe. The reason being is because they understand instinctively some of the things circumstantially that were bad in their upbringing. And so they don't want to transfer that onto their kids. Our parents brought us into this world through no desire of our own. Exactly. Choice, right? Exactly. And as a result, it is also the responsibility to do the best that they can in giving us a life. Mm. Um, but through circumstances. And like, you know, my mom, like, I hold her on the highest pedestal. My mom is my homie. She's my mom. She's my, my confidant in a lot of ways. Like, I love her to death. But I can also recognize many ways in which her parenting was terrible. But it's not entirely her fault. Even though her parenting was terrible, it's not entirely her fault. Her circumstances, war-torn country, didn't have an education, came here, didn't speak language. I'm sorry. Raiders Cat said coddle means to um, <clears throat> to baby them. Yeah. If you think I'm going to baby my kids, I don't baby nobody. Like, I give a lot of leeway. I allow people to go on a journey. But my kids are going to feel some judgment from me. And that's probably going to be one of the worst ways I parent. Because it's really hard for, keep, for me to keep my judgment like a mystery. And I want my kids to come to me for sure. But it is one of those things where I'm not very much of a coddler, which is part of my harshness as a human, is that I tend to be like very blunt. So again, I think I'll be very kind, but I'll be very blunt with my kids if I have kids. Like that's what I want. I want to be blunt, but kind. So they know I'm never lying to them. Oh, look, Leighton. Leighton is the top comment on the Abraham Preach video on my, I like Leighton. Latanicals. Le- Leighton has a good channel. That's so cute. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to like, uh, ooh, Kai says, I think I'm going to empower uh, the fuck out of my kids. Yes. And push them to realize and be as great as they know they can be. But also the foundation for them is try again when they fail. Yes, I want to know that I want them to know they can do things. And I want them to also like if they come to me and they're like, someone said something mean to me today. I'm like, that sucks. So like if you think I'm going to coddle my kids, like my kid's going to come home and be like, mom, this kid was mean to me at school. I'd probably be like, well, what now? Like, what do you want me to do about that? Like going to school is a part of dealing with mean people. If you think he's mean, wait till your boss at Amazon fucking fires you while you're nine months pregnant. Like, let's talk about mean. You know what I mean? Like, I want to I want my kids to be ready for life. And coddling, I find, does not help children survive life. I don't think my parents coddled us at all as kids growing up, which also is a part of why we're kind of fucked up a little bit. Gary says, I think I mean coddling. I mean that the way the kid thinks will eventually become a Britney's, be a part of Britney's bubble. We're all a part of our bubbles. You can't escape it. My kid will not be able to to escape their DNA. They will not be able to escape who their mother is. They will not be able to escape anything from their childhood because I'm going to give it to them, baby. That's the whole point is I'm not only going to pass down my genetics. I'm going to pass down my anxiety, my anger, my emotions, because children do adapt to the environment they're raised in, which is why I'm trying to become prepared to be a better mother. So I don't give them like too much of my bad stuff, right? But of course they're going to have me as the foundation. I'm probably going to be quite popular by the time I have children in the sense that their mother will be someone that their friends can find on the internet. They can already do that now, right? So my kids can't escape my bubble because they were going, they're going to be a part of it. It's going to be a part of their foundation. But it is going to be their job to become their own person and choose their own bubble because I don't want to trap them in mine. It's really only meant for me. It was like just trying to piece it together, <clears throat> doing it on her own. I understand everything and it makes me respect her. Yeah. But it doesn't change the fact that as a result, I didn't have any guidance. As a result, I had to do so much on my own. Yep. You get me? And that's still my road dog. I'll give everything to her, but it doesn't change the circumstances. And the reason why I'm saying this is that when you start to look at it, we are so protective of our parents we haven't even given us our ch- a chance to forgive them mm. 
or to exactly potentially criticize them in ways that can make them better. Because believe it or not, my mom has improved. Mm-hmm. She's become a much better parent mm-hmm. over the years. Same you know, with I'm mine. One of seven, middle child. She has. I've watched her yeah. change. But that didn't come from just being like, ooh, go queen, you can never. No. There were some tough conversations that had to happen. There was some like self-reflection. Like, yo, this is fucked up. There's no reason that I've been raising myself for these last five years. It doesn't make sense. I'm telling like, what, what? But that's the circumstance. Of- okay, is it weird? I hear noise in the background. Are there people at Abba's apartment right now? Like, I've never heard people on, on the back of their videos. Are you guys hearing it? There's people, right? Am I hearing voices? Cars I was dealt with. I'm not going to sit here and complain about it, but we are going to have certain conversations so that we can fix things for the future. Yes, ma'am. But also, so I can t- speak to that resentment or those weird feelings I have when it comes to my mom, to the things that I've always kept bottled inside because I want to be a good son. And I've been able to not only let those things out, but also heal from them and then from there create a space where nice. she can come back into my life in a way that's much better, that I can embrace her in a lot more ways, and then I can be a better son. So this conversation that I'm talking about is one that you may not even have with your parent because maybe your parent is not ready to acknowledge the yes. ways in which they fucked up. I will tell you this. My parents are immigrant parents, so they always say, Betty, I am so sorry that you feel that way. I don't know what to tell you. I did my best. But you know what? What I hear now, at first I heard bullshit. But now what I hear is, Betty, we acknowledge we didn't do our best, but saying and admitting that out loud would hurt our pride. So instead, we're going to pretend this is a you problem. But secretly, we're also going to slightly change our behavior a little bit, which tells me they internalized, like, that they did fuck up a f- at least once. That Because my parents did change. Like, my parents have become better parents over the years. And I think it's because their kids took a stand in a lot of ways. I think it's their kids were calm and collected and said, Mom, we love you. You're great. But, uh... Yeah, in these ways, maybe like not the greatest, right? And again, my parents will never actually acknowledge that they were in any way bad parents. They'll just say like, we did our best. What do you want? We did our best. What do you want? And it's like, yes, yes, I know. I know. I know. But I I really see it in their actions. In their actions, because my parents have changed, I know they're hearing it. They just they man, that Middle Eastern pride is so fucking strong. Yeah. But you still have <sighs> to have that conversation with yourself or with someone close to you. To be able to let that stuff out, to be able to acknowledge where you've been hurt. Because you can't forgive if you can't acknowledge you've been hurt or you've been neglected or whatever the fuck it is. You can't overcome something that you haven't acknowledged even exists. And a lot of kids, when it comes to their parent, have certain behaviors that if you ask them about, like they snap at little things or they get annoyed or they avoid their parents because they don't want to talk to them. The reason why that is, is there's a lot of unresolved issues there. And we can't pretend like our parents, at least mine, they came from a super, you can't, you wouldn't say dysfunctional because in American terms, dysfunctional is different. You would say worn, torn fucking country where their friends and family were mutilated in front of them on a weekly basis, right? You would say my parents came from an environment that is very different than our cushy environment in America. So they didn't, they, they dealt with their own issues, right? Like arranged marriages and issues around raising kids and like, what was the expectation of life expectancy? You know, all of these things, ostracization, like my mom and dad both got ostracized from their family after they love married, right? Like no one talked to us for like, six kids or something and so I get it like I do but that's the irony I guess and that's how I know my parents are trying to do different now they're so frustrated that their daughter's getting married secularly but they're still they still want to meet him if it's convenient they still want to talk to him they still want to get to know him my partner but they 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 still chose not to meet him when he first came to the U.S. which is kind of a bummer because I think they missed an opportunity and now they probably won't see him again until Uh, August of 2024 will probably be the first time they meet my husband, which is going to be weird. But, you know, uh, they made their decisions, right? Like my siblings came out and tried to meet him and they were really excited. Not all of them because they knew that this is probably going to be my person just the way I spoke about him. But my parents, you know, they've had to deal with me and I haven't I've brought home a lot of people that I said were going to be my person. So in some ways, my parents have the wisdom to know that it might not be real, but still the pride to not check. And so that's kind of a bummer. But, you know, it is what it is. So they have survived a lot on their own, their previous lives, even raising me as a child. They survived a lot and they're doing the best they can now. And it's not perfect. My parents were not perfect parents and no one will ever be, including myself. So my only hope is to be better parents, which I think you could argue they were better parents to me than their parents were to them. 
even though my grandparents are very wonderful humans, God rest their souls, all really great people who tried their genuine best, but they fucked up a lot, my grandparents. And my parents fucked up a lot, and I'm going to fuck up a lot. Just hopefully less. You always want to fuck up less. And so that's what I mean. You can learn to maybe potentially even fix those if you oh. have that conversation. So that's what I want to say. Yeah, no, I had to. I mean, overall, I'd have to give my parents a B minus. Ooh, B minus. A B minus. A B minus. Damn. That's pretty good. I was going to give my parents average. Well, maybe they, they're above average. They're like a C plus. A B a minus. A C plus. They're definitely not a D. They're definitely not an A plus. Okay. In some areas, they were like an A plus. In some areas, they were a B. But I would say mostly C. Mostly average. You gave them a grade. Yeah. I, gave them I think. Like, oh, that's a good question, Preach. Um, Or that's a good... I don't know. Some ways, my parents were awesome. Like, I'm definitely, like... I've got a leg up on, like, half my friends in some areas. But then I've got a leg down on some areas. You know what I'm saying? You. you took it to the next level. I I'd give him a B minus because my, 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 mom, my mom hearing that would be livid. Because my mom was a great A student. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, you know what you do? <laughs> on Mother's Day, head up a movie party card. <laughs> <laughs> With B's and C's, my nigga. <laughs> Um, wait, Garrett says, I, I mean, they work with you emotionally. So I would say better than average. Just saying, uh, now they're better now. Uh, that's a problem. Which parent am I judging? I'm 33 years old. My parents have been my parents for 33 years and they've been different parents along those years. Ooh, that's another question. Which parent am I judging them on? Am I judging them on 2007 parent or 2019 parent or 2023 parent or 1992 parent? That's a good question to ask because I think I would judge my parents differently with all their their different ages. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm, which parent am I judging them on? Because like I would judge myself differently too. As a kid, I, I think I went from being a pretty good kid to a really rebellious child to like doing what she thought was best. Like, I don't know. Okay, that's another question. What year are we grading these people? <laughs> And just for an extra joke, don't be serious, but just saw a baton. Oh, no, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not actually going to do anything. Yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'll fucking do it. I don't care. But, yeah, like, I'd give her a B- minus because overall, my parents, they did a good job, but they did some pretty fucked up shit. I Caribbean mean, people and people from... Uh, <laughs> immigrants have a... I, I have a propension sometimes to raise... The way they raise their kids is very, is very messed up, you know? They raise by insulting. Hmm? Insult people. They insult you. That's fucked up. They say things <laughs> that are crazy. My man, my, my, I remember my parents used to say a couple of times, yo, I don't know what the, I don't know what I did to have you. I don't know what I did to have you. <laughs> Funny story is. What do you mean? I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did, what I did to deserve you, to have you, like to have, not to deserve you, but. Well, well hold up. You're, you're, so explain how it happens. My dad was always saying like whenever he was pissed off, what, what, what did I do? What did I do? Oh God, what did I do to get you? To deserve you as to a child. To deserve you as a child. Mm. Yeah. And it's crazy because I was not doing drugs. I wasn't in no gangs. I was not doing that. I was not none of that. My mom thought I was. That was the problem. I was so rebellious as a child when it came to doctrine that my parents legit thought I was having sex or doing drugs in high school. I never did any of that shit till I was 22. Actually, drugs, I didn't even, well, I guess drugs I did in my early 20s, like Selvia and stuff. And then weed, I didn't even do weed till I was like 28. But my mom, like, actually, it took like 17 conversations of my mom being like, well, Brittany used to do pot in high school. I was like, hey. I never did drugs in high school and I never fucking had sex with nobody. And like I hated that I was so rebellious with just like how I thought about the world that my mom just couldn't imagine that I wasn't doing those things because it coincided with how she saw the liberal elite and the liberal education system and the liberal pressure. And so she was like, no, Betsy, I bet the peer pressure got to you and you did drugs and had sex in high school. And I was like, no, I never fucking did. I was ostracized and alienated because I didn't want to do those things. And now I'm being ostracized and alienated by my parents because they think I did those things. Can we fucking like, hello? And the problem is, is like, I'm so rebellious as a person. Like my partner even said to me, yes, what did he say to me? He said, 
he said something like, you know, for your personality type, you really haven't slept with that many people. And I was like, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> and like, it's true that like, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's not the highest number, but it's not the lowest number. And so it is kind of interesting, I guess. Like when we have these conversations, what your personality will make people think of you, which is why stereotypes are so harmful sometimes, but also can be true. That none of that shit, none <laughs> of that hoodlum shit, never been to prison, never did none of that shit. At the time, I was not even drinking alcohol. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I got fed up. I got mm -hmm. fed up one day. One day he said that shit to me. I don't know. I don't know what I did. Oh, he was praying like it was It's like a. God, I don't know. God, what I, I don't know what I did to have this job, right? And that's a fucked up thing to say mm -hmm. to someone, to your kid. And one time he said that, and I was like, that's the last time he says that without me saying nothing. And I remember one day he said <clears throat> that one last time. He said, he said that. He said, I don't know, oh God, what I did to deserve you. And what I told him, it was like, well, if you don't remember, it must have been boring as hell. And I turned around and ran because his face changed and he jumped. We ran. That's the other thing, too. With parents like mine, I assume with parents like theirs, they can say anything they want. They can talk mad shit about you for as long as they want. But the moment you say shit, you better run, bitch. We ran, we ran. And that was that. But... It's some messed up shit to say. It's some messed up stuff to say. There's a lot of things that are crazy. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things and traumas that I learned from my parents. And I got the trust issues and stuff like that. So, yeah, the B minus is for that. Overall, they did a good job. But they did some fucked up shit. Mm. And at the light of those messed up things that messed up things that they did, I had to eventually just look at them. And not to them, but just to me. You know, it was it was for me. It was not even for them. Whatever. Mm. They didn't even know. Parents tend to not even know at some point. They don't know. They don't even recollect that they beat me. They're like, oh, we didn't beat you that oh. hard. Oh! 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 Literally. Literally. I, well, we didn't even hit you that often. I don't even remember hitting the kids that often. And I'm like, we all fucking remember? Like, that's the thing is, like, sometimes my siblings will, like, literally get triggered because they're like, fuck, I'm being gaslit so hard. And I'm like, no, nah, we remember. As siblings... And it's true, the girls got hit less than the boys. But the girls were also smarter about their rebellion. So fuck boys. Boys are so impulsive. They're so dumb. You know how many times my brothers did things and I was like, bro, like just think it through. But they can't. They have no impulse pro like uh, control. But yes, oh my God. Oh, we just had that fight. We had a fight uh, like last year, I think, in spring sometime. I was visiting at home and my brother was like, you hit us a lot. And my parents were like, I don't remember. I don't remember one time. One time, not one time. And I was like... Oh, it was like so frustrating. Like they don't even have fucking amnesia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, okay. And uh, so I had to forgive them. You you don't know, but you're holding to a lot of things. So and the forgiveness is for you. It's not for whenever them. Whenever you go visit them, you when you snap out, it's, it's just the accumulation. But if you don't, if that's because you didn't let that shit. He didn't let that that, that that stuff go. If you don't let that stuff go, then and it's always going to come back. And mm -hmm. you're going to be tense and mm, so you have to, you know, let, let it out. That's it's, it's a balance. Yeah. In that some of you guys, all you do is complain about your parents. Not recognizing I've been there. the circumstances mm. and the things that they do. I've made whole ass videos about my parents. I, I understand. Right. Mm. And the circumstances that were given to them that were probably unfair. Mm. Okay. And then there's also the portion where, like, some of you just spend all day protecting your parents no matter what, mm. even when you're holding to a lot of resentment. Mm. Bruv, the way your parents raise you and treat you oftentimes results in how you end up loving other people. Yeah. That is the reason why people from two-parent households are far more likely to be able to do relationships and all this other stuff is because the dynamics that they witness in terms of maintaining a relationship, they carry on into mm. their own lives. Kids for single-parent households, that's a struggle. Because you don't even witness it. And your relationship with your parent, whichever one's at home, is oftentimes tenuous because they're so stressed out. You have to find something else. So you respect them for else. staying and taking care of it. But the stress that they put you under as a result of their circumstances is a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I just want to like talk to the comments uh, section really fast. Because you guys are talking about like, oh, our parents like hit us and sometimes we deserved it. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I piss my dad off so bad that honestly, I get it. <laughs> I get it. And at the same time, fuck, like I am the kid and hitting me just made you, me like hate you more. 
So the problem is, is that maybe I deserve to get the fuck slapped out of me. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm not, it didn't help. Like it didn't help me in our relationship. I had to forgive those moments because the truth is, is that like, I just saw that as like another reason to prove that you were out of control as the adult. I was basically a child consistently trying to prove that the adults in my life were out of control. And then when I got older, I realized like, oh, all adults are children, but with money. Okay, cool. Got it. So it became much easier to forgive the world when Trump became president because I was like, oh, cool. We're children. We're children with money. So this is what adult life is, being children with money. And at the same time, when shit hit the fan, my parents were really adult. Like my parents and me were adults and then sometimes we're children. I, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I could forgive my parents because I could forgive myself for not being a perfect adult. That's the only reason I could forgive my parents because I realized there was no such thing as a perfect parent. Even parents I see who like will pay for their kids' college, support them, be there for them. Their par- their kids have things to complain about too. Like my parents, I'm not gonna lie, they were in my business, like snooping through my drawers, throwing away things they didn't like, never telling me. My parents were always in my business and I never felt safe at home because I always felt like I was being watched. And they were doing that for my own good. But at least they asked me about my life. My mom's like, who are you listening to? Avril Lavigne, let's listen. Who's this Evanescence? Let's listen. Who's this Disturbed? Let's listen. Like they wanted to be in my life because they wanted to make sure I was doing good. I have some friends who had parents who were like, I trust you. You do the best for you. So much so that the parents even forgot how to ask their children like how are you doing today because they're they wanted their kids to feel so not smothered that they never really asked about how their kids were doing and so now they have to like repair their relationship in a different way I have to repair my relationship by teaching my parents boundaries they have to repair their relationship with their parents by teaching their parents like hey it'd be nice if you cared about what I was doing in life even though their parents do they usually just call me to ask me because they don't want to intrude their children's privacy and I'm like you could just ask them you could just ask them, but it's, 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 you don't want to do the wrong thing as a parent, right? So my it's hard. mom, God bless her, barely saw her because she was working <laughs> multiple jobs trying to make ends meet. And I always love her for that. But when she did come home, she was so stressed out from her job that she was hard to be around. She was hard to be around. I had a hard time having any kind of conversation. I, mm-hmm. I can only say this for the first 17 years of my life. I had zero conversations with my mom. And when I say a conversation, I mean, I sit down, she says something, I say something. And it's not like, what do you want to eat? Chicken? No, I, I never had those kind of, cause she was, it was so much. Gets it tough. It's so much, right? But she would praise me every time I helped out when I would pay extra. I had a job at 16 paying bills. And so my report with her was like, oh, if I just help out around the home and do stuff, then, you know. I'm going to have peace. And that ended up being the exact pattern that I engaged in with all my relations. Ooh. That ended up being what it was. But that comes from that environment. Mm. And I didn't recognize that until much later on in my life. And when I recognized that, I was able to forgive and let go and now chill when I'm around my mom. But... You guys might also be surprised. Your parents have some growing to do and you have an opportunity to even help that and give them space to do that. Yes. Some of you are like, my parents, your parents are not made of stone. They're people. They are malleable. They're us, they but old. Evolve. They can't change. I'm not saying it's going to be the case, but I've witnessed it. Have you witnessed it? Yeah, yeah. And it's not going to be necessarily easy either. But I'll see. But, 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 yeah, there, there's a possibility there. What you, you said something crazy. You said you, the day you became a man is when you realized. When you do, the day you realize you become a man is not it's not that eighteen year old bullcrap. It's yeah. really when when you realize that your parents sometimes two complete idiots, okay, and just because they didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And the second thing is that you realize. Oh, you Wait, have, hold on. Re-explain the last part. What do you mean? Like they're two complete? Like, well, they fuck up. Okay. You know that part where you protecting? Yeah. It's because you grow up. When you grow up, the answer is your parents. So you think you grow up and you're like, these the one that know stuff. Yeah. But sometimes you realize, no, sometimes they don't know. Yeah. It hurts. They do. It hurts as a kid. You grow up wanting your parents to be these amazing people. And when they're not, you're like, oh, my God. Now, don't get me wrong. My parents are really good people. But 
when it comes to parenting, I think they struggled like every parent. They winged it. It was the 80s. Like my parents tried to read the right podcast or read the right podcast, listen to the right radio shows, read the right books, blah, blah, blah. But it was really controversial. Um, at the time, there was a lot of people with a lot of ideas of how to parent. But yeah, your parents. Oh, uh, Garrett says, help your parents grow. If you have the relationship with your parents where you can do this, yes, I tend to be this person. I feel like I'm even doing it now with choosing my marriage the way I want it, which is to say like, hey, I know that in this family, we usually respect our elders and we usually do what our parents want so we can keep peace. But hey, I just want to remind everyone that I'm 33 and I'm going to make my own decision and I love you so much. This isn't me rejecting you. This is me just doing my own thing over here. I'm not pushing you away. I don't love you less. I love you so much, mom and dad, blah, blah, blah. And then going to Europe and doing my own thing with my partner. Again, I think it will really help my parents grow and accept that they gave birth to incredibly, fiercely independent children. And that my moving to Europe and me getting married to this man is a part of that independence that they gave me. My parents gave me this independence. It's in my genetics. Okay. So again, I want to reassure my parents that they raised us well because they told us we could do whatever we wanted in some ways. Like we don't value... Uh, a lot of the materialism of the world, we don't overconsume mostly. Most of their children are pretty good. We're not the greatest with money, but we are the greatest because we spend it on experience. We um, we don't spend our money on like, like my, none of my brothers have ever wanted a Bugatti. Like what the fuck? We don't want sports cars. Who cares? We want experiences. And my parents gave that to me. They didn't give us a, a desire to be a doctor or make $100,000 billion a year. But they raise us to love our life, to be good partners, to be thoughtful and considerate, and uh, to choose a life that would bring them the most peace. And so I think they're learning that all their kids are making choices that didn't look how they thought it would, but it is going to be the lesson they taught us. So none of my siblings became doctors, okay? But we're all going to do pretty good for ourselves. We just won't be doctor level. And I think they're going to realize that that was the message they sent us, and it was the right message. They did send us the right message. We should be happy with our life. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Is it Bryson's birthday today? Stop it right now. Is this true? <gasps> 32 today, fam. Let's go. You thought you were turning 33? Ugh, girl, you wish. We would have been twinsies. Not really. I'm about to be 34. But happy birthday, Bryson. Love you. Do not know. They're just winging it like anybody else. You think that being an adult is, oh, yeah, I'm going to have my shit together? It's not. Nobody knows what the f they're doing. Excuse mm -hmm. my language. Nobody knows what the hell they doing. They just winging it, right? So does your parents. And on top of that is your parents are raising you one generation late. They're raising you how they was raised, but you two generations out, and you're surrounded by other things that are happening in your generation, and it gets even worse when you're uh, uh, immigrants because they raised you like they were raised, and you are in a country that is not theirs, so you're like three generations apart. True. It's rough, right? So you realize your parents, sometimes, they don't... That's why some of my siblings want to stay pretty modernized while other siblings care less. And it's interesting. I think I'm going to be okay because I work on YouTube. You guys can tell me what's up. But I don't know what kids are watching. Like, you know, when I grew up, Little Bear, Franklin, PBS basically is what I was raised on. I don't know what kids are watching today. Do they watch Sesame Street still? Do they watch Franklin? Like, is what are kids watching? I have no idea. So it is like kind of funny. Like you do raise your kids sort of like I was thinking about raising my kids with 90s nostalgia. Mark was shocked. My brother, Mark, because I was like, I'm not taking my N64 to Europe. And he's like, oh, you're not going to raise your kids with Nintendo 64. And I was like, yeah, I think uh, by the time I have kids, if I have kids, they're just really not going to care. And it's only going to be for me. And it feels weird pushing that on to them when that's not going to be their thing. But I'll, 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 I'll associate nostalgia in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, I'll show them maybe some movies or something we can bond over, maybe some classic Disney. But yeah, like taking my N64 to Europe seems like very unreasonable. I don't know what the hell's going on. The second thing is you realize that you become a man when you're going to have to take care of them. You're going to have to be like, yo, asking, you, is you good? Yeah, I'm good. And then you decipher that that's a lie. And you're like, no, you're not. What? Just come here. Do you know the first time you had to figuratively slap your parents upside the head and be like, go to your doctor's appointment. Yeah! That's a weird one. I had to take my dad by the... I had to take my... Like, you come in. That's a weird one, right? Yo! And That's I was like, one. yo, 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 yo. 
I heard you was on some on that bullshit that you're not taking your pills. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oh my gosh! Wait, little kids are raised on Paw Patrol, PJ Masks, and Pepe the Pig. I know what those are because my nephews watch them. But man, see, that's gonna be hard for me to sit with my kids and watch like Paw Patrol because like I don't know what that is and I don't feel connected to it. But I'm gonna have to get connected like my parents did with us. I guess my parents didn't grow up with Blue's Clues and they had to watch it with us so they knew like Steve's here. So yeah, I guess there's something to be said about that. Oh, that's so funny. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's so worth. What the fuck is? And you like? And, and I look at my dad like this. Like what the? Like I? Like, Urban Bridge that I? Yo, what, what, so what, 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 what the hell is going on? What the? What? That's what? So what's? Fast. What's that bullshit? What? It, can you explain to me? I almost said. That. Can you explain to me, young man? <laughs> to my dad. Can you explain to me, young man? No, 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 no. We're not laughing here, sir. We're not laughing here, sir. <laughs> 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 What is that bullshit that you're not taking your meds? Hmm? Bro, my mom. Yeah, but it's because, it's because, and then you're, your dad's like, stuttering. It's because, it's because. Every time my parents are like, oh, I'm trying a new thing. I'm like, what's it called? And then I'm like Googling for them. I'm like, hey, this causes increased heart, like rate and plus slash heart attacks. Take, stop eating it. Like my parents will do this thing where like they'll Google and they know a lot about a lot. But sometimes my parents just, they'll like, their relationship with medicine sometimes is so on point. And then other times I'm like, <gasps> like that is what part of the internet are you on? Stop. This is what we're doing. Like, it's kind of insane. What is going on? You're having flashbacks to you being a kid. <laughs> Bro, I can look at my mom and be like, hey, stupid, you about to go blind. Go to your eye appointment. No, no, but I don't want to. You're going to go blind. You're literally going to do more work for me when you blind. Go to your goddamn doctor's appointment so you make it easier for me to take care of you. Literally. I want you to keep your fucking eyes. <laughs> you're about to go blind, dude. But I don't want... You're, you're going to lose your eyes. And then you're like, what, what, are you, what did I have to do? Oh, God, to have to That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yo, it's crazy. There's moments like that. It, it really is an evolution and a change. So yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, I'm telling you, I got stories for days. Yo, but it's just like one of those moments. I'm like, yo, the fuck is wrong with you? When you can, when you you know there's a switch. When you know, <laughs> wait. I just said to you that that shit was very damaging as a kid. That your parents call you names and shit. <laughs> And then you grow up because no matter how you're going to try to get away from it, you're going to become like your parents. Okay? And then, well, you something pisses you off so much Preach. to look at your dad and like, listen. No, it's true, guys. I'm becoming my mother every day. Have you noticed that when I tell stories, I'm mostly talking about my mom? It's because I have mommy issues, not daddy issues. <laughs> Here, stupid. <laughs> you call them a name. You call them just not, 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 it's not. We're not f***ing around here. And like, and that was... That has actually helped me understand. <laughs> Wait, Julian, there are instances my mom would wash lettuce with dish soap to get rid of the bacteria. Bro, legit, my sister-in-law washes her fruits and vegetables with soap because she's like, all the chemicals and the manure and stuff freaks her out. Isn't that cute? It's like so funny. And when I first watched her watch it, like she washed a tomato with soap, I was like, literally my whole like, my whole like, ah, what's happening? True story. <laughs> Their position and the way they are. That's why I didn't give him C minus. I gave him extra points. <laughs> hey, okay, damn. It's, just, it's some weird stuff out there. But hey, you know, we... we, 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 we You're we, about to go blind. That was... I was like, yo, I couldn't believe I'm yelling at her. Yo. I mean... You can't even understand that I have to explain this but, to but, you, lady. But guys, this is the most beautiful thing. There's a point where your parents go from being your parent to your friend. And you're no longer just looking at them laterally. Now you're looking at them horizontally. And eventually you're the one who's looking down as they're starting to struggle. So you have to have that mindset of realizing there's going to be an evolution provided you guys both try to grow together. And so have those conversations. Yeah. You're going to see a change. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe you guys have stories yourselves, things you want to share. We want to hear from you in the comments. I love, I love reading people's feedback. I'm telling you, I actually go through a lot of the comments and I do check them out. So leave it. Um, but if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to like and that's all that so stuff. Sweet. We want to definitely be able to spread these. But I feel like this is a topic that's not talked about often. So true. I want to share that with you. Like, Funny. legit though, guys. Like I, um, I really think I became the most humble, the most loving, the most warm when I realized, like, oh, my parents are like me, but old.
Like they are no different. None of the adults are. They're struggling all the same. You know, when I, I should have realized it ever since I was like a little kid, like a child, like five years old, adults would come to me for advice. And I never understood it because I'm like, you're the adult, bro. And then when I was like a teenager and then when I'm now, like now a lot of my callers are much older than me, right? Like um, plenty of them. So I should say plenty of them where I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And I'm realizing because it's, it's knowledge isn't about age. It's just about knowing and you could share that at any age. And I'm so grateful that I was such a well-read kid and that I have like a lot of sort of forms of knowledge in my head. And I'm glad that I can help so many people. But it is one of those things where like, yeah, Kai like said everyone's on a journey. Everyone is on a journey. And so I think it's easier to forgive ourselves and other people when we realize that. Uh, I know like even when my parents are going to retire, they've taken care of themselves pretty well. Um, uh, but I think that eventually they'll probably end up with farm brother. And then if they ever ended up with me, we wouldn't live in the same house. My mother and I really wouldn't like that. Neither with my father and I will we'll end up in the situation my grandparents did, which is like having a mother-in-law suite on the same property, like having a second home, uh, like a smaller home on the same property is where my parents would prefer to be. Uh, even if they're with my farm brother, they really prefer to be in their own home. My parents also like their privacy, um, which is a little bit different, I suppose. In the past, when I was being raised, like my grandparents and my uncles and aunts all lived in the same house. So it wasn't that abnormal to have multi-generational homes. But as we've modernized, even as a culture, we like being near each other, just like in different parts of the land. So buying 10 acres and putting three houses on it is much more suitable, I think, for my family's lifestyle now. So I think in the future, that's probably what we'll do. But we're always keeping it in mind. I think Farm Brother and I are the two siblings who are very keeping it in mind that someone's going to have to take care of mom and dad. And that mom and dad, though they might be okay, they're still going to probably want to be near their grandkids. So they're probably going to end up near Farm Brother. There's just a very high probability I'll stay in Europe and or won't have kids. And so because of that, it wouldn't make sense for my grandparents, my parents to be grandparents to no kids. Like Farm Brother has four kids. So he's definitely, they're definitely going to go with him. So again, I think like these kinds of videos are so meaningful to people like me, I guess, because honestly, I was raised in an environment where you have to respect your parents and elders, even when they're fucking gaslighting you or beating you. And then you have to have a whole conversation with yourself as you're getting older. Like, why did I do that? And still, even now... I don't disrespect my parents on purpose. I try very hard to dress modestly when I visit, to curtail my language, to be cognizant of their differences in their bubbles. I try really hard to meet them where they're at, which is probably why I'm good at meeting a lot of people where they're at, give or take. And I think that they give me a skill that a lot of people don't have. I can really humanize just about everybody um, because of the way that I was raised. And it's not a skill my parents have. It's a skill my parents gave me unknowingly because they didn't know how to humanize me as I was aging. And I had to learn how to humanize them so I could humanize myself. So yeah, uh, I can't be that mad at my parents. They made me this Britney. And this Britney's pretty darn good. She's got a lot of problems though. And so it's a constant daily battle. I think that's what's hard. I saw a comment saying that, that it's hard when you have to deal with their mistakes. And I do. Like I have borderline personality disorder because of the environment I was raised in. But my parents unknowingly created an environment that was good for them but bad for me so that's what worries me like one of the reasons I'm afraid of having a child is like what if I create an environment that isn't suitable for my child and their individuality um, because the environment my child needs to thrive isn't the same environment I need to thrive like my parents created an environment that was really good for them but for me was really bad but am I supposed to ask my parents to be less joyful because they had a kid who was me do you get what I'm saying so I really struggle with that idea. Are What if you have a kid that just genuinely doesn't thrive in the environment you've created for yourself? Yeah. Stuck in my head in real life I'm in bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then